it's been such a journey for me and I really don't want to be the kind of person that just keeps repeating herself in every video but I wanted to share with you just the transformation that I am making in my life and in my home and my home is even reflecting the difference in me and you know where the heart is the home is where the home is the heart is and where the mother's heart is is where her home is and I'm noticing such a big difference in my life because of it and some of the biggest differences I'm going to share with you today so what I'm noticing is the details of things so like this for instance I planted some of this mint and then I put this in here and this little wheelbarrow in here and that is how my life has become. It's become like this mint plant. See, before I was in such a hurry, I would get all the work done, I would plant my mint, but I didn't really enjoy it because I was so busy. And now I plant the mint, but I have more time that I can add the little house to the mint, that I can add the little wheelbarrow to the mint it's in the detail of things and it's the detail of life that's really changed with me i've always been the kind of person that i would get my work done really quickly and really fast but the problem was i didn't have any time to enjoy it it was always rush 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 had to get it done and now since i put these amish home lifestyle type life to my life i know that doesn't sound right but since I've been putting all these things in my life, I have more time, more time. I'm not so hurried. I'm not so rushed. I'm not so exhausted. I'm not so driven where I'm at the point where I'm a hamster in a cage that just goes around and around and around. Are you tired of the rat race of life? Have you got the rock bottom where the rat race of life, you can't take it anymore? That's how I got. I knew that something had to give. I knew that something had to change. I knew that on the road to success, it isn't always what you've accomplished as far as what the secular world would say you accomplished. When I was a young mom, I had three small children. I had three children a year apart, and I had my first child at 17. We are married 36 years. And I'm going back to that way of living, and I'm just enjoying things. Like, I, I keep pointing to this because this is my life, right here. This here was my life, the mint. I got the mint planted. I enjoy the mint. But now I have the extra time to put in the house, to put in the wheelbarrow, to be artistic, to enjoy it, to sit down and spend a half an hour doing something instead of plopping it in the ground and quick getting it done and quick getting it done. I'm now enjoying everything so much more because I got rid of so much baggage in my life. Baggage in my life that had nothing to do with YouTube. Baggage in my life that had nothing to do with the internet world baggage in my life that had to do with my childhood. I got rid of baggage in my life that had to do with YouTube and the outsiders and the people out in that world and the online world. I got rid of a lot of baggage and it feels so good. I did a lot of things that were self-sacrificing, but boy, did I re-reap the rewards. And what are my rewards? <sighs> a calmer Tessie? a more peaceful Tessie, a Tessie that is just happy in her skin, a Tessie that is just, just so full of joy. I had somebody ask me, how can I be so happy? Now, one thing you need to know is happiness can be hard for a certain kind of person. There are some people born in this world that are melancholy. That's how they are. They're more dry humor, they're melancholy, then you have people that are in this world that happiness and being extremely happy and bubbly and excited, that's me. But somehow I lost my soul and happiness through two years of such grief 
and my grief was online. And so while I continue to show that, try to show the happiness, my sadness showed through. And when you're going through grief, I think that people should be more understanding of other people when they're going through grief. Because when you're going through grief, you may say things you don't mean, you may do things you don't mean, you may be just a little bit crazy. <laughs> you just, your brain, menopause and grief and the two of them together hit me like a ton of bricks. I was going through menopause the moment both my parents died. And so I was grieving and then I had all these menopausal things and I think that people need to be more forgiving of other people and say, you know what, so and so is going through a lot, let's give her that benefit of a doubt. <laughs> but with that being said, the Lord is the Lord of my life. He is my Savior and I can come to Him no matter what. There was a time in my life, way before YouTube, that anxiety took a hold of my life. And it was through a medical trauma. I had a medical trauma through it. And then what developed was this chemical type imbalance where I would get anxiety. That was the whole start of my anxiety attacks when I hit 30 years old. And then I worked through it. And then, of course, when my parents died, I worked through it. I did very well considering all I've been through. But when you have a Lord in your life, that doesn't mean your life is easy, but that means that you have a friend. And for some people, that's hard to, they don't quite understand that. Well, how can Jesus be your friend when you can't see him, but you can feel him? It's, it's, it's a personal relationship. It's not a denomination. It's not what church you go to. It's a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I felt him more in this last two years than I have ever felt him in my life. And my weight loss was all because of that too. I lost now well over 100 pounds. And it's all because of that baggage and that inflammation and that all festering in me. And now I'm me and I'm just enjoying everything. <laughs> just taking a little bit slower and then just enjoying my life. I still have hard times. Yes, life is not a bowl of cherries, but I look upon it different now. And I look upon it and I learned all of the things that I went through and I shared it all on YouTube because I shared my life on YouTube. And I do believe it helped my grieving process to share my life on YouTube. I really do. I, I don't know where I would be without YouTube over the time when I lost my parents because so many of you had lost loved ones as well. And it was nice to have people understand me and it was nice to have people understand what I was going through. And, you know, yes, there was times on YouTube, maybe I shouldn't have shared so much, <laughs> but I don't know. If you don't share your life with others, others can't be impacted and others can't be changed because of the things that you share. So, I guess I'm okay with sh what I shared with everybody. I, I really am. I think that by my sharing, I set myself different from some people. And I think with my sharing, oh, I opened myself up to a lot of criticism. <laughs> oh, yes. But I think it taught me a lot. And through that criticism is what made me grow and flourish. Yes, I did bloom where I was planted. I can't wait to share with you again tomorrow what I'm working on. Just know that every single day of the week, there is always a video of me and I'm always there to just keep pressing on. Come on, you can do it. We're the little engine that could. We can do it. I think I can. I think I can. Yep, I think I can. And I just might do it. Bye everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you do enjoy my videos, Thank you. You don't have to do anything. In the world of YouTube where everyone tells you you need to like something, you need to subscribe, 
I'm telling you, you don't need to do any of that. I'm just glad that you're watching my videos and I'm glad that you're a part of my life. See you guys again.